AI coding CLIs have become all the rage lately, and Amazon has jumped into the fray with Amazon Q CLI. It's a really good offering based on top of Anthropic and Claude. This shouldn't surprise you at all because Amazon Q was previously Fig, which is a fantastic terminal extension I've been using for years. Now as Q, they built on that foundation to give us a really good vibe coding CLI. We'll get it installed and I'll show you three very th cool things you can do with it. But before I get to that, I do want to acknowledge that this video was sponsored by Amazon. A huge thanks to them for supporting this channel. Got to tell you though, even though this is a sponsored video, my opinions are always my own. And I think you'll find that this is a really cool and powerful CLI tool that you should check out. All right, let's get into it. So getting started with the Amazon Q CLI is super easy. So we've got the installing Amazon Q for the command line page here. There's a link to that in the description right down below. Now I am on Mac OS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on this download Amazon Q for the command line for Mac OS. Then I'll jump over my downloads folder. I'll open up the Amazon Q DMG and drop that into my applications. And then I need to start it up. So I'm going to use Raycast here to start it up. Amazon Q. I'm going to open it. All right, now that just popped up as dialogue. You're probably going to see that there's some things that you need to install. I've installed this before. I I love Fig. I've had it for a long time. So I always have this, but you'll probably need to install the shell integrations as well as any accessibility for your particular terminal. All right, so let's try this out. All right, so over my terminal, I'm going to run Q. And there we go. Amazon Q, good to go. So... All right, so let's try and build an app and then do some vibe coding on it. So the first thing I want to do is actually just build a Tanstack start app. Now, I know that from the command line, I can do PMP, for example, PMPM create start app at latest, and then give it the name of my application. Well, let's say that I don't know how to run that PMPX command. Can I just ask the LLM how to do that? Well, yeah, I'm chatting with an LLM right now. So let's try this. How do I run that NPM JS module create start app to create a new Tanstack start application? All right, there you go. Pretty good advice. We could just ask it to actually run it right now, or I can run it in place by simply doing the command right here by just prefixing it with the bang anytime you want. But you know what I want to do instead is I want to use an MCP integration or model context protocol integration, because when you're working with these LLMs, MCP is everything. MCP allows you to do things like connect to databases and connect to services and get documentation and for example, run an application builder like Create Startup. Now that I know, because I wrote it, that I can do PMPX Create Startup at latest, MCP, and have it start an MCP server. But that doesn't do much because it's not integrated into Q. Q doesn't know that I'm doing that. So I'm going to tell Q that I actually have this MCP server. So to do that, I'm going to use Q and then MCP, and I'm going to ask for help. So here are my commands when it comes to the model context protocol or MCP. I can add a server. So I'm going to do QMCP add help. So now we can see everything we need to do to add a new MCP server here. First, give it a name. I'm going to call it Tansec start. Then give it the command. That's going to be PMPX. You can use MPX if you want. And then the arguments. The first argument is going to be the name of the module. So create startup. And then the second argument is going to be dash dash MCP. So that's added the MCP server to my local workspace, basically my local directory. You can also add it globally by using scope and then using the global scope. All right, so now that that's installed, let's try Q again. And now we can see that it's loaded up Tansac start. Awesome, we're good to go. So we can ask it to create a Tansac start application called Q example. And, you know, just for the heck of it, we'll bring in React query. That's a standard add-on. So the first thing it's going to do is get a list of all of the available add-ons by calling this tool called list Tanstack add-ons that is available in that MCP server. I'm going to trust that. So now it's going to call that and it says, oh, okay, great. Tanstack query is available. That's awesome. So it's going to use that as an add-on. It's going to go and build that in my current directory. Fantastic. So do we want to run this action? Yes, no, or trust. So yes means, yeah, we want to do it. No means we don't want to do it. And T means we always want to do it. So in this case, I'm just going to say yes. All right, that's built. And now I can do PMPM dev in that directory and bring it up. How cool is that? We got our homepage. We got our Tansac queries. So we know that that's been installed correctly. So cool. So 
Now you know how to install an MCP server and execute it and how to handle those tools. Let's go and vibe code a little bit. So let's say that I want to take that home page and turn it into a tic-tac-toe game. How easy is that? Well, just have to say, turn the home page into a tic-tac-toe game. Let's see what happens. All right, so it's parsing through our local directory by using its own built-in FS read tool. So it's found the routes. It's now found the home page. It's decided to use 10 stack store for state management. Interesting. And now it's come up with a diff. So this is going to change all of this code into this code inside that index page. And yeah, let's give it a go. Let's trust it to go and do that. Now it gives us a summary of what it's done. So again, we'll use that bang pmpm dev to run it. Looking pretty good. Let's give it a go. Oh my gosh, tic-tac-toe. All right, so there you go. Not a bad vibe code for this. As you can see, it was pretty easy to go and add that. Let's go and do a little bit more vibe coding, but this time I actually want to use a screenshot as an example to tell it how to do it better. For example, I would like a better layout here and maybe some colors for the X's and O's. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that section of the page. I'm going to save that off. And now I'm going to go back into Q. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, have a look at this screenshot. But how am I going to do that? Well, as it turns out, you can just go and take that file that I just created, drop it right into the terminal, and it's going to put a reference to the file in there. Easy peasy. All right. So have a look at this screenshot. So I'll ask it to make the grid a little bit nicer and then add some colors for the X's and O's. All right. It's having a look at your screenshot. It's reading that image. It found the home page and now it's making some changes. Awesome. Let's say yes and add a little status display. This is cool. All right, so let's run it and see what it did. Okay, again, a decent improvement. The fun part about making a video like this is that I never really know how it's gonna turn out, but you know, just for a demo, I think that's pretty okay. All right, so now we know how to install MCP servers, do some Vime coding and add some screenshots. Let's talk about one more thing and that's how to use this without the interactive mode, because I think it's a lot of power in that. So let's go back out of this and we'll exit back to my terminal. And I'm going to do Q chat. So I can ask Q, how do I check in my files? All right, so it seeded the conversation with that question and it's telling me, as it should, that it should use get in it and get add and all that. But how about doing it so that it's not actually interactive? So it just gives me the result and without getting in that interactive console. Are there some options for that? Sure. So I can go to Q chat and then help and I can see what options I have. And one of my options is no interactive. So I'm gonna do that Q chat. And one of my options is no interactive. So I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna have it trust all the tools. So at this point, I'm gonna try something like check in all my changes. All right, there you go. It executed the git commands to check in all my changes. Not bad. It even tells me how to push to a remote repo. And there you go, three plus an extra way to leverage the amazingly cool Amazon Q CLI. Thanks again to Amazon for sponsoring this video and this channel. It is super appreciated. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about this, please let me know in the comment section right down below. And if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.